Welcome to a new episode of The Masters of Merge. Today, we're going to discover what two-way and three-way merges are, and how automatic merges work. Let's introduce the merge as scenario for today. I'll start working on a branch, make a change in it, and at the same time, you were doing another change on the same file, and we're going to try to merge it. Let's compare your changes with my changes. Your changes are the ones on the left, and mine are the ones on the right. We might think I deleted this directory exist block, and I also changed the cache by file cache. But this is a little bit misleading, because it depends on the order of the diff. Actually, there is no way to know if you added the directory access thing, or if I delete it. If we swap the order, then we find that it's no easy to distinguish who made which change. I'm going to merge using plastic. Just right click on the branch, click on merge. I see the file cache is in conflict. I will click on resolve conflicts and then KD3, which is a two way merge tool I configure, shows up. Since this is, since this is a two way merge tool, I need to actually solve every single conflict. Keep this in mind. In a two way merge, every single conflict requires manual intervention. I go through the conflicts, just keeping the, the right option, and then I just save and quit and finish my merge. Let's see now how we can resolve the same merge using three way merge. The first thing I'm going to do is to configure my plastic to use a different merge tool instead of KD3 that I used for the previous example. I'm going to switch to Plastic SEM. And then, instead of automatic resolution, which is the default, I'm going to force manual conflict resolution, which is going to be helpful for this example. Now I'm just going to repeat the merge. Here is the Plastic 3-way merge tool. The first thing you can see is the common ancestor. This is the base. This is how the file was. Then, here are my changes and also your changes. And the, the good thing here is that we can really see how the file was before, so we can understand that actually you didn't actually add the directory access because I actually was the one who deleted, right? That's the key. I deleted that. And then the conflict is automatic. There's nothing here to actually decide. The tool knows that since I just deleted and you didn't make any change in there, the resolution is automatic. The reason why the, the tool is, is showing up is because before we set it up to, to show up even if there were no conflicts. Then we go for the second one and then here we see that actually you were the one who changed it from uh, file cache to cache, right? And that's the actual changes that happened and the conflict is basically automatic. Let's now figure out why the three-way merge is so powerful. Okay, I'm going to repeat the merge again, but this time I created not just one file, but I actually modified a bunch of files, actually like 12 files. And I'm going to run the merge with two-way merge conflict resolution. And then you're going to see I have to go conflict by conflict, actually solving and deciding for every single change that happens on files that were modified in the two contributors, we need to go and manually resolve it, even if they were trivial and should be automatic. So the thing is that with two-way merge, every single resolution needs manual intervention. And as you can see here, it's really painful. I mean, I modify 12 files and have to go one by one, conflict by conflict, even if you and I never touch exactly the same line of code. So here I am, next conflict, making the decision, next conflict, making the decision again, and then saving and going on to the, on to the next one. And, and here it goes, right? It's, it's, it's really boring. I mean, it's like all the time choosing, choosing, choosing. So it's this, this is not really what you want to do when you have like a hundred files modified at the same time or something like that. It's not something that happens every day. But can happen. What happens in the same S scenario with a three-way? Okay, you right-click again, merge the branch, resolve the conflicts, and whoop, everything is automatic. 
that's the key, that's the difference. Let's now make it a little bit more complicated. What if we actually change exactly the same line? Okay, we're going to repeat the merge, but this time one of the files had an actual manual conflict, a real one. And this is what we see. I have this file cache method, actually a constructor, and then I actually change file cache, file cache by cache path, and in your case, you modify it to cache. So this, we have a conflict. What you see in action at this point here is semantic merge, comes built in with plastic, but in order to solve this conflict, we need to actually run what we call a submerge. So we're going to basically merge the method. So I just expand this and click merge. There's also the option to just run the text merge tool, but I'm going to show the, the, the regular example. So we just show it. And now we see the text merge in action just for this method. And here we need to show the contributor. So we get rid of the base, how it was, because we don't need it. And then it's a matter of choosing whether I just want one of the contributor or the other, or I could even go and edit it manually. In this case, I'll just choose one of them, save and exit, and we're done with a manual conflict resolution. What we learned today is that two-way merge requires human intervention for every single change, even the trivial ones. Three-way considers how the file was before or changes and can automate most of the conflicts. Three-way only asks if we change the same line concurrently. And that's the beauty of it. To learn more about Plastic, you can always go to plasticscan.com slash documentation and download our version control book where you will learn everything about, about branching and merging and all the ideas behind version control. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you next one.